Merry Christmas, and what a Christmas it has been, like none other in my memory. I hope, though, you have found a way to celebrate even in this crazy Christmas. I didn't see some of my family that I'm used to seeing, but I remembered them, and I thank God for them, and I connected with them over the phone or on Zoom, and I found a way to celebrate Christmas, and I hope you did too. Maybe you made it to one of our Christmas Eve services. What a great time. As crazy and new as it all was, I'm so glad for the energy that went into that and all that we got out of it. I want to remind you that it's not too late to give to our end of year offering. This is so important to us as a church as we close out the financial year strong, but also as we focus our giving on these two magnificent mission opportunities. 20% of everything that's given from the month of December goes to church planting in Ecuador and to our food ministry right here in Johnson City. Uh, if you still want to participate in that, you can give online or drop a check in the mail as long as it's postmarked before December 31st. And all of that will still be counted toward our end of year offering. Well, it's the last Sunday of the year. And what a year. 2020 has been a year of struggle and a year of blessing. It's been a year of heartache and a year of mercy. It's been a year of unexpected challenges and unanticipated adaptation and change as the church and you in your life rose to meet these challenges. And I hope that over the next couple of days, here as 2020 winds down, I hope you will set aside some time to look back. Maybe you'll want to call a, a friend or a family member or, or circle up with those that are inside your COVID bubble and, and just look back at the year and, and talk about the year we've had. You might need to look back and mourn. Psychologists say that one of the most important things we can do with some of the hard things in our life is honestly acknowledge the difficulty and give ourselves space to mourn. And those psychologists are just catching up to what Jesus said thousands of years before that. He says, blessed are those who mourn. Really letting yourself grieve actually carries with it a blessing, not just through the natural process of grieving, but through the supernatural intervention of God, because God is close to those who mourn. So maybe that's what you need to do, is look down, look back and, and, and mourn some of the regrets and losses of 2020. But don't just do that. Make sure you also look back and give thanks for 2020. If you're careful, in the midst of the chaos and the challenge, you're going to see the blessing of God. The old song tells us to count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. And that song, that's a spiritual truth right there. That is a, that's a real, effective, spiritual discipline that actually brings healing to the heart. I don't know if you knew that, but if, if you're struggling and you're down right now, a lot of us get down after the holidays, kind of a post-holiday letdown. If that's kind of your situation right now, one of the things that could help you is to just list all the blessings of 2020. Just literally get out a sheet of paper, find something to write with, and make a list. Again, you could do that together with friends or family or just on your own in prayer to God. And just the discipline of making a list, God will use that to heal and strengthen your heart. But when you've done that, when you've looked back and mourned where you need to mourn and let God comfort you, and given thanks for the real blessings that God has worked in your life this year, after you've looked back, it's time to look forward. And that is what today's interruption is all about. All throughout this series, we've been talking about how God interrupts our lives with good news of great joy for all people. 
We talked about the interruption of the angels who appear to the sleepy shepherds and the glory of the Lord, Lord shone around them and the shepherds were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be the cause of great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The interruption of the angels meant that finally, at long last, the good work of God was happening and the promised rescuing king had come. We talked about the interruption of the shepherds, who after they have seen the baby they, and everything was just as God had promised to them, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. We said the recognition that our God keeps promises just like it inspired the shepherds to announce the good news to their neighbors, it should inspire us. Inspire us to have hope and worship a God who keeps promises and inspire us to live evangelistic lives, to tell our friends and our neighbors and just the strangers on the street to not give up because God keeps promises. We talked about the interruption of the name. The quiet little interruption when on the eighth day it was time to circumcise the child, he was given the name Jesus. The name the angel had given to him when he was conceived. This name, Jesus, reminds us of the great interruption of history. That now, God, through the Son, Jesus Christ, is going to save us from our sins. That we no longer have to try in futile effort to pay the penalty of our own shortcoming, but rather the debt has been paid, nailed to a cross. Salvation has been accomplished through Jesus Christ, and this interrupts everything. We talked about the interruption of Simeon. When the parents brought the child Jesus to do what the custom of the law required, and Simeon, not just doing what law required, but more than that, takes the baby in his arms and prays God and says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. The interruption of Simeon that reminds us that this really is good news of great joy for all people. It is before all the nations that God's mercy has come. Jesus Christ is the one who brings the light into the darkness so that now in him all can rejoice. And now, when the baby is 40 days old, having brought Jesus to offer sacrifices of gratitude and purification, I'm sure Mary and Joseph were tired and ready to get back home. But as they were leaving, they encountered one more interruption. Luke 2, 36. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She'd lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then she was a widow until the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them, at that very moment, she gave thanks to God. And she told about the child to everyone there who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. 
She told about the child to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. You see, this prophetess knew that Jesus was the reason they had kept looking forward. The Jewish people had a lot to look back on. A great history of mighty victories of political power and economic power and spiritual power when the temple had thrived and the kings were strong and the people were faithful. And maybe you're sometimes tempted to look back at when things were great. And they had a lot to look around at as well. There was a lot when you looked around, except that it was chaos, that their nation was weak and their enemies were strong and spiritually there was confusion. There was a lot to look around at and fear. But some faithful men and women like Anna had kept looking forward. Looking forward to the time when God would redeem. Looking forward to the one, the promised Messiah that the angels announced, and now Anna is witnessing in the person Jesus Christ, this king who would set things right. And not just looking forward to a king, but specifically looking forward to what the king would do to redeem God's people. To redeem something is to buy back what has been lost. In the ancient world, uh, if you had a debt, you might be sold into debt slavery. And your family could redeem you by paying off the debt. Or if you were a soldier captured in battle, the, uh, the, the winning army would hold the captured soldiers in, in, in prison until the losing army could pay the debt to redeem the captured soldiers. To look forward to redemption is to recognize that there is bondage in the present moment that can only be broken by an outside action that buys back what was lost. Anna tells about the child to everyone who was looking forward, not stuck looking back to when things were better, not stuck looking around to how bad things are today, but looking forward because they believed that God would redeem. And Jesus is still the reason that we look forward. It's easy, isn't it, to get trapped looking back Maybe you look back to before COVID when things were easy, or you look back at COVID at how hard it's been. It's easy to get trapped looking around us at, at the struggles of this present day and, and figuring out what exactly comes next. But because of Jesus, we look forward. We look forward all the way to the moment of Christ's return when he will finally establish history the way it is meant to be, and God will accomplish what God has always intended to accomplish, the repair and restoration of all things for the glory of God. We, like Anna, look forward to redemption, right? This is the promise that God will buy back, God will redeem what has been taken. And this is what God is going to accomplish through Jesus Christ. And I am looking forward to that. So much has been taken, right? We're aware of it in a year like this, but it's true every year that losses that are not part of the way God intended the world to work happen all around us. And we depend on God. We look forward to the day when God will redeem God's people restore what has been taken from us. And specifically, as God's people, we look forward not to the great end when Christ returns and set things right. We look forward not just to the grand redemption of all things that will be accomplished by Jesus Christ at the end of time, but we look forward to the way God is always partnering and advancing God's purposes here among us. I'll be honest, I'm looking forward a lot to 2021. I mean, I'm no fool. It's not going to be perfect. But 
we're getting better at this masks and social distancing thing. And I'm convinced that as we work really hard, we're gonna be able to protect one another and especially protect our most vulnerable from getting the virus, even while we move forward as a society. I'm looking forward to vaccines. More and more are approved and being produced every day. And, and I really am excited. I think God has worked through that process and is gonna bring a, a lot of protection to a lot of people through that process. And we might even get be done with this in 2021. I think so. I'm looking forward to all the ways we are gonna to continue to express the love of Christ and the mission of God in our personal lives in 2020. This chaos has produced a great opportunity for us to live like Jesus. Specifically, I'm looking forward so much to what our church is going to be doing in 2021. I want you to know just a little bit about what's happening in 2021. I'll get a little bit specific for you in case you've got questions. So in-person services relaunch January 10th, 2021. And right now, we don't see a coming interruption to that strategy. Now, I know that many of you will wisely continue to worship online while the pandemic is raging in our region. And, and it is, of course, raging in our region. And we wanna be cautious of that and careful. So if you are in a high risk group, please continue to make use of our online strategies. They are not going away, but they are going to adapt just a little bit in 2021. Starting in 2021, in order to deepen the unity uh, and make the transition back to in-person services as seamless as possible, our online services will begin to be a direct broadcast of our in-person services. You may have figured out by now that for the whole year of 2020, We've actually been filming our online services in advance so that we could edit them in advance and fix any mistakes before we uploaded them for broadcast on each Sunday morning. That's gonna change in 2021. We'll have a test week on January 3rd, and then on January 10th, when live services resume, we will be directly broadcasting the live service. We think this is gonna increase the unity of our church while some return in person, but most remain online at first. We think it'll make the transition from online back to in person a little smoother because you'll be used to the experience. And we also think it'll make everybody feel just a little bit more connected to what's happening. Our groups ministry is getting ready. You can look forward to an amazing year for our groups ministry. We'll continue to have in-person classes, Zoom classes, and hybrid classes. We'll have Sunday school classes, weekly Bible studies, and so many more kinds of groups. Many of our Love Does groups are continuing together, and we'll support you. If you need curriculum or help doing that, just reach out to the church. We're also gonna be launching more care groups to support each other, especially in this difficult time. Listen, I just if you are looking forward to 2021 and right now you're sort of looking forward to a year of isolation, then don't. Connect with us. We are ready to help you be connected in the two, new year. We don't want anyone isolated in 2021. And we have so many other ministries that are ready to launch strong in 2021. I hope you will stay connected. It's going to be a good year for FCC next year. Because next year is a big year for us. I hope you've already heard. Maybe you've caught the rumors. Next year is our 150th birthday as a church. The celebration of our 150th year begins on January 10th. That's the same week that in-person services restart. It all happens January 10th. We relaunch in-person services and we begin a brand new series celebrating 150 years of God's faithfulness through this local church. And it all builds to a weekend filled with celebration later in November. So look forward not just because the vaccine's coming, but look forward to what a great year next year is gonna be for our church. And finally, I wanna challenge you to look forward personally. I, I began this sermon by asking you to set aside some time and look back. Look back and, and mourn with God what losses you've suffered. 
but also thank God for the blessings you've received. Well, I've got another challenge for you. After you set aside time to look back, I want you to set aside some more time to look forward. Set aside some time with God and ask God, what does God want you to anticipate in the next year? Because I believe God wants you to face this next year with spiritual expectancy. Now, not expectation. Expectation is where you've decided in advance what needs to happen, what should happen, what has to happen. And if it doesn't happen, you're going to be put out. That's foolish. Setting those kinds of expectations in the world we live in right now, you're just asking for disappointment later. But expectancy is different. Expectancy is a posture that trusts God to do something. That trusts God to meet you and love you and care for you and lead you this year. I believe that this is a year of maturity and growth for you if you will just join God on the journey. I want you, like Anna, to look forward to redemption this year. I really do believe that this year is going to present a year of spiritual opportunity for many people. As the vaccine kicks in and we start to reemerge from crisis mode that we've been living in for 10 months, and it's exhausting, and we begin to reestablish some rhythms that actually maybe feel normal again, you have a chance to reestablish your life in some intentionally spiritual ways. Are you going to start having friends over to the house again once the pandemic's over? Well, why don't you intentionally have friends over that are far from God so you can build a spiritual friendship with them? Are you going to start meeting up with more people after the pandemic's over? Well, why don't you make sure you join a group or launch a group or invite your neighbors to study God's word with you? As we emerge from crisis mode into rhythm mode, you're going to have an opportunity to invest and organize your life in some intentional ways. See, here's the thing. We know what Anna did while she waited for the redemption. The text tells us. It says she worshiped, she stayed connected to God's people, she prayed, and she waited. Waited for God to redeem through Jesus. And that's my challenge to you. As together we look forward to 2021, let us worship every week. It, listen, maybe you're going to be maybe you're tired of worshiping online. I don't care. Double down, recommit. Stay committed to worship. That's what Anna did while she waited. Let's connect. I know it's harder. Maybe you're zooming into a study school class or you need to join a new group or you need to call the church office because you're disconnected and that feels so intimidating, but do it. That's what Anna did while she waited. Let's pray. Man, we need a church full of people that are praying right now. Pray for the sick, that they'll be protected from death. Pray for those who aren't sick yet, that they'll not get infected. Pray for the treatments and the vaccines to work quickly and come quickly. And pray for the church to grow and expand and accomplish her mission in this season. And finally, like Anna, together we wait for redemption. The redemption of God's people that is accomplished through Jesus Christ, through whom God is buying back what has been taken and repairing what has been lost. And because we wait for a Savior who is faithful and true, we can pray together with confidence. Lord Jesus Christ, we wait for the redemption of your people. We, with Anna, look forward to what you will do this coming year. We look forward to what you will do in our world. Bring this virus to an end, Lord Jesus, we pray. We look forward to what you will do through our church, God. 
we're so excited about getting to celebrate 150 years. Would you make that celebration meaningful and rich? And would you let's use it, God, to set us up for the next 150 years? We look forward to God, to what you're going to do in our lives. I, I just pray for everyone listening to this, that you would, you would challenge them to set some side of time to make 2021 the most spiritually meaningful year of their life, God. We look forward, God, because we believe that Jesus Christ will do what he said. He will redeem God's people. He will restore what is lost. And he will accomplish the good purposes of our God. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.